He said, make something up. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way I usually introduce this next, next gentle. Because he's Spanish. And the Spanish love their garlic. So usually they're a little oily, a little fragrant. So I dubbed him the one, the only, Juan Carlos Santiago y Benvidez. Benvidez. The dirty, rotten, filthy Spaniard. <laughs> From Glenavon. Unfortunately, yes, we are in the same kingdom. I, I do claim that much. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. The Lord. That's what I get for a lot of drunken, filthy Irishmen to introduce me. Alright. Wheel of Bardality, spin, turn, turn. Tell us the lesson that we should learn. <laughs> oh, drinking. Oh. <laughs> I promise I won't tell that story. Well, okay. I might tell that story later. Yeah. When your wife listens. <laughs> I think tonight I will tell a story. I, I think for drinking, drinking requires stories. Everyone sings while they're drinking. But if you're doing something about drinking, it's a story. And this being the SCA, I believe history is important. So tonight, especially for the little ones, I want to teach you a history lesson. Many years ago, back before most of the kingdoms were even kingdoms, back when it was just roving bands of men out against the cold and trying to preserve their land and their honor, there was a mighty Northman named Sven. Sven lived far up to the north in Finland, and he had a mighty hall. And in Sven's hall, there were barrels of mead and barrels of beer. And occasionally they had water because they had them up before. <laughs> so, it was towards the end of winter, and the supplies were running low, but he knew spring was coming soon. And so he decided that he would throw a grand all thing and call all of his friends from across his lands to come join him. And they drank together, and the mead flowed like water. And the beer flowed like water. And the water didn't flow at all because they had beer and meat. <laughs> and it was good. Unfortunately, as with most mornings, the sun came up the next day. And Sven wished perhaps that he had saved just a little bit of meat left over to chase off what had bitten him the night before. And he thought about this for a while. And he thought, I've got nothing left in all of my larders. My, my, my stores are empty. But wait! My friend Thorgrim lives just down the coast in Sweden. Our boats are ready. I'll gather the men. We'll get in the boat. We'll go down to Thorgrim. He'll have something. And they got in the boat. And they stroked. 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 Until they came down into the fjord where Thorgrim lived. And Thorgrim had yet another mighty haul. And it was stocked with mead, and it was stocked with beer. And lo, they did have a mighty, <clears throat> mighty gathering. And the mead flowed like water, and the beer flowed like water, and the water didn't flow at all because they had beer and mead. And it was good. You'd think you'd have learned the lesson the first night. You would think. <sighs> Unfortunately, once again, morning came, and the sun shone its eyes upon a weary and bloodshot crew. But wait! Just down the just down the coast in Denmark. Nay, right across the, the straits. There, there was Torval Torvald, Thorgrim's cousin. Torvald had yet another great hall. And within, once again, there was there were many fine things to drink, and they knew that there they would find succor. And so they gathered up their boats, and the men got in, and they stroked, and they stroked, and they stroked. The Vikings used this camp for a lot of things. And they stroked, and they stroked, and they stroked. 
and they came upon Torvald's Hall. I think we see where this is going. <laughs> the mead flowed like water, and the beer flowed, flowed like, like water. water, and once again the water did not flow at all because they had beer and mead, and it was good. The next morning, unfortunately, once again, the men, at this point, fully three, four score of rather less than less than fresh looking Vikings was it? <laughs> looked upon each other and they thought where where can we find something to remove this fog which has covered our eyes and these bells which are ringing in our heads now there were no more Vikings that they knew of south of them they couldn't think I mean there were some Germans but they were just kind of barely related but there were these guys called the Franks they were way down it was, it was a little bit of a, of a road but they thought they could make it they'd never been there before but they thought eh, what could it hurt so they got in their boats and they stroked and they stroked and they stroked and they stroked days and nights passed and finally they came upon the Frankish coast and they they disembarked from their ships and they saw no holes and they looked around and they found frightened villagers who talk like this and they wondered what their problem was. <laughs> but they they had alcohol of a sort at least. It was kind of thin and watery and purple of all things. But it took at least some of the sting out of the hangover. And after looking around a while, they, they decided that they could party here for a while and the villagers seemed to not mind as long as they were still standing afterwards. So they, they hung out for a while, and then, going back to Sven, you remember Sven, right? Oh, yes. Sven thought about this, and he remembered, he hadn't seen Brunhilde in about three weeks. She was not going to be happy. <laughs> He'd been gone in a drunk for well longer than most of your husbands, I'm sure. And he decided, I'd better bring something back for the missus. So he looks around, and there wasn't a whole lot of alcohol left, but they had tapestries, and they had gold, and they had this sweet-smelling stuff that he'd never seen before, but he figured the wife would like it. She liked flowers. So he gathers all this stuff up, and he tosses it into the boat, and they row back home. And they had such a good time, and they were talking about it on the way back, they thought, we could do this every year. I mean, this is, this is the perfect time to do it. The weather's getting better. The rowing is nice. We get away from the women for a while. It's perfect. And thus, my friends, hmm. thus was the tradition of going a Viking established. And now, when the story passes around the fire, please share and tell everyone this history that they may know the story of the first Viking beer run. <laughs> Thank you.